Canada's smallest province, PEI. It's a unique place that is loved by so many people across Canada. PEI is one of Canada's most popular tourist slash vacation destinations. There are so many people that have cottages or vacation homes in the province. So whether you're looking to move to PEI permanently or just seasonally, here are five things you should know before making the move to PEI. Number one, the bridge. PEI is an island, but you obviously already knew that. That's no brainer. But to be fair, I was in Newfoundland one time and I had a local guy that I was talking to. He tried to convince me that PEI isn't a real island because they have a bridge that's permanent and it connects them to the mainland. They're like to, to each their own, I guess. But anyways, PEI is an island. And since it's an island, there are only a few ways on it and a few ways off of it, all of which cost money. Before I list these, I want to note that these fees are only for when you leave the island. You don't pay when you're entering. That's how they get you. First, you got the Confederation Bridge, which has a toll of approximately $50 for a passenger vehicle. This brings you from Borden, Prince Edward Island to New Brunswick. Port Elgin being the closest town. Then you have a ferry service between Wood Islands and Pictou, Nova Scotia. Taking the ferry costs $82 for a passenger vehicle. Then there's another ferry. It runs from Surrey PEI all the way up to Les Îles de la Madeleine, which is, there are a set of islands that are part of Quebec. In English, it's called the, the Magdalene Islands, but in Quebec, nobody calls it that. This ferry is roughly five hours long and costs $56 a person, and then there's an extra fee if you decide to bring a vehicle. Also note though, this ferry charges you for both directions. It's not free to enter PEI this way like it is for the bridge or the Picto ferry. And then lastly, there's the Charlottetown Airport, which in regular times has direct flights from Montreal to Toronto and multiple of them a day. And once upon a time, there were actually direct flights to southern vacation destinations offered by airlines like Sunwing and other vacation airlines. And of course, as well, with the airport, you obviously have to pay to get on the island and to get off the island, but that's pretty obvious. Number two, if you like parks, beaches, and being outside, PEI is your place. PEI is most commonly known for what it has to offer outside. The beaches, trails, and parks are on another level. The famous red sand beaches are awesome, and here I'm going to list you a bunch of places I recommend checking out. Here's the list. Number one, Cavendish, but you already knew that Cavendish is one of the most famous places to go in PEI. Number two, Brackley, same thing, very popular for tourists. It's a national park, you will have to pay to get in. Number three, the West Point Lighthouse, it's on the most western tip of the island. Great spot, nice beach, amazing view. Number four, the East Point Lighthouse. My opinion, a tad better than the West Point Lighthouse. Really nice spot to sit. They have nice Adirondack chairs you can sit in. It's, it's a great spot to visit. Number five, Basin Head Provincial Park. Pretty much on the way to East Point is Basin Head. The, the thing with the beach there that's special is that the, uh, I don't know what they call it. I'm pretty sure it's something like the, the Sand Dances or something like that. It's a pretty cool place. Number six, Argyle Shore Provincial Park. This is on the southern part of the island. Again, it's just it's a really nice beach. Not much else to say there. And number seven, Bonshaw Hills. This is a trail that you can walk on. It's very popular. Lots of people go from all over the island to visit, and it's just a great place to be outside. Number three, driving on the island. Driving on PEI is what I would call an experience. It's not overly complicated in the sense that there are so many different highways, which makes it easy to get lost because let's be honest, there's not the only what I would call real highways. And even then I have a hard time calling them real highways because they're not divided. Maybe that's just a city person and me saying that. But anyways, you have the Trans Canada, which is labeled as the one and then the Veterans Highway, which is labeled as the two both run from Charlottetown all the way to Summerside and then a little bit past Charlottetown and past Summerside. Anyways, not the point. Here is what makes driving on the island not fun. Number one, the roundabouts. The roundabouts are ridiculous, especially in Charlottetown. After a while, you get used to them. I've been to PEI enough times now that 
I know where I'm going and they don't bug me. But I remember one time, this was I think in 2018, I was visiting PEI. We were there for the Cavendish Music Festival and I had two of my buddies from here in Montreal and they could not believe how many roundabouts there were in PEI. It was pretty funny. Every time we'd get up to a roundabout, they'd just start complaining. It was, it was hilarious. The second thing about driving on the island is that the speed limits. Since there are no quote unquote real highways, and when I mean real highways, again, I mean divided, the highest posted speed limit in all of PEI is 90 kilometers an hour. But if you've ever talked or driven with a local islander, you will quickly learn that nobody on the island drives the speed limit or quite frankly anywhere close to the speed limit just putting that out there and lastly the pedestrians charlottetown is not exactly a fun place to drive around i highly recommend walking if you can you can get stuck behind literally anything from people walking to biking or even horse carriages which significantly slows down your commute time in heavy tourist places like charlottetown and cavendish and other places Pedestrians will slow you down. That's a fact. Number four, tourist season. This is more so if you're planning to move to PEI permanently. I'm just going to be like comparing tourist season to off season, and you're going to see what I mean here. May to September is a wild on the island. The population of PEI increases significantly. In 2018, the island had over 1.5 million visitors to the island, which most of which would have been between May and September. Keep in mind, there are only roughly 160,000 people that actually live on the island. So adding 1.5 million, obviously not all at once, but still, that's a significant boost. The island definitely gets a little crowded in the summer and is loaded with tourists. It's great for the local economy, no doubt, but for the people who think they will be moving to an isolated place with little to no people, it's not exactly the case. In the winter, on the other hand, the island is dead, and it is the case. I've seen it firsthand, and the difference is incredible. I went to PEI in the fall, so it wasn't even the winter yet. It was mid-October in 2019, just for a few days. I drove up to Cavendish because I wanted to go to the beach, and I had never seen the place so dead. Before being there in October 2019, the last time I would have been in Cavendish was the summer of 2018, and the place was bumping there were so many people but then comparing it to 2019 in the fall when i was there nothing was open there was not a person around it was crazy i have an aunt that actually lives in pei and i told her about it i was i couldn't believe it she said it's so peaceful and she said it with a smile on her face it was pretty funny and number five cost of living while pei is not an excessively expensive place to live there are some things that you need to be aware of three of the biggest industries in pei are tourism fishing, and farming, which are primarily seasonal. What a lot of people do in PEI is work in these industries during the peak season and then pull EI, which is employment insurance, during the winter. So my advice to you is this. If you aren't working in these industries, have a job lined up before moving to PEI because unless you are sitting on a pile of cash, it will not be all that easy to find a job that are not in these industries. Charlottetown's not a major business hub. It's not a huge city. There's not a lot of jobs to go around. As for housing and other costs, PEI is not overly expensive like I said. It is for sure more expensive than New Brunswick in some in some areas. And in, also in some areas, you would be paying more than you would be in Nova Scotia. It's all relative out east, like relatively comparable. But like I said, the biggest advantage to moving out east is if you have a job lined up before you arrive it'll give you an automatic advantage. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about PEI in the comments. Again, leave some suggestions for future videos. I have a few new ideas for content that I'm going to be trying out. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.